class in Alabama. There were 11, 12 people in that class, I think. And when we came out of, after, after, out of shul after one hour, there were at least 1,000 views on that class. And after two days, like more and more and more, it's growing. And that's a gift that the Creator gave to us today in this generation, that physicality is also unlimited in a certain way. That God developed things with time that will be beyond time. That those things are staying and we are changing seats, but uh, everything is continuing, and especially the internet. It's such an amazing gift, even though that the... I heard once Rab Shlomo Karlibach, he said that there are two kinds of, of religious Jews. One are people that are afraid. They're afraid. They went through so much sorrow, so much pain in early generations, or even in this lifetime, that they're always afraid what's going to happen. So they must protect themselves all of the time. And they're thinking how I'm going to protect my children and live in close communities and watching over themselves and the rules of Allah and keeping everything very, very well guarded. And there is a second kind of Jews that they want to change the world. And they're not afraid, and they're just going and, and, and changing the world and, and, and telling everyone that Hashem is here and that you can come closer to Him. You cannot say that person is better than that one. We can understand people that went through so much sorrow and pain in their lives. And now they want to protect themselves and their families. You can understand that. But I'm different. What can I do? I have a, I'm, 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 I'm working on my courage not to be afraid. If you open the book of Tehillim, of King David, if you can tell me on that person that he was brave, so I, I misunderstood the book. That person is crying and begging, please Hashem help me, save me, what I'm going to do? Every moment of his life is scared. I'm confused. I lost my mind. I don't know what to do. Give me advice. Where, where should I go? What should I do? Help me. They're chasing after me. I must hide. Help me to find a place where I'm going to bury myself. But he's the king of Israel. That's the leader that is someone that's crying all day long. That's the king of Israel. When you have the power to admit in your weaknesses, in your fears, and you're lifting them to prayer, you say to Hashem it Barach, I'm a liar, Hashem, I'm a coward, Hashem, I'm, I'm poor, I'm broken, I'm confused, I'm lost. If that's the truth, you're close to Hashem. If you're going to lie to Hashem and you're going to say, No, Hashem, I'm not afraid, I'm holy, I'm so pure. In that moment, you lost Hashem. You lost the divine spirit of the Creator. God is not with you in that place anymore. It can be only you or Him. Only Him or you. You need to choose. Or that you're going to idolize him and make him God, or that you're going to idolize yourself. No, me, I'm important, I'm a rabbi, I'm righteous, I'm learning Torah. Every person in this world can fail in a minute, can lose everything that he's got in a second. Hashem can take everything from the richest person in, in, a, in, a, in a breath of a hair, in a moment. His life he can take, so what? Can you promise to wake up tomorrow morning? Let's set a meeting for tomorrow. You and I will set a meeting for to It's a joke. <laughs> Can we set a meeting for tomorrow? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm so jet lagged. This is why I'm laughing. <laughs> can I promise to wake up tomorrow morning? You're crazy. There's no way in the world I can set a meeting for tomorrow morning. I can want, though. I can want to meet you tomorrow morning. To promise I'll be there. Amen. <laughs> pray for me. I'll pray for you. <clears throat> I wanted to tell you, today I had a very important, clarifying conversation with a friend, a good friend of mine from Jerusalem. And I gave him some advice. I was talking to him about some very important issues 
things that can be very useful for him to work on them in life. And basically I told him, you need to chase after your truth, to be a man of truth, to hold your truth. Stop being afraid of people all of the time and, and being forced to do things against your will. Like, he lets people use him and do whatever they want with him and, and bossing him around and telling him, you should, you shouldn't, you must, you have to, and screaming at him and insulting him. He's working in, in like in a, in, a, in a bad business and, and his family is very, very hard on him. So like he's going through a lot and I'm talking and trying to strengthen him and to give him advice and, and, and to show him that he can do it and that he can make it. But the person, like it's too hard for him to heal. And then he's saying to me something that like it, it clarified for me the mistake of people, why people are being so, so far from the truth. And he said, but I went so far from the truth already that it's hard for me to know what is right and what is wrong. So I told him, you're wrong. To know what the truth, it's a very easy thing for you. You know exactly what the truth is. You know when you feel insulted. You know when you feel hurt. You know what you like and what you don't like. You know everything. You know what is right and what is wrong. You know everything. You have your mind, it's working, but you're afraid to choose. You're afraid to walk with that understanding. You don't believe in yourself. You give up on your free choice and you let other people run your life. Because they're telling you that you're wrong, that you're lying, that, you, that you're confused, that you're, that, that you're hopeless, that you're helpless, that you're... Whatever they're going to tell you, you're buying. But not because you believe them. You know that they're wrong, you know that it hurts you, you know that you suffer. But you're afraid to count on yourself and to go on your own path. And to stand up against those people that are forcing themselves on you, trying to overpower on you. The problem is not to recognize the truth. The truth is here. The truth is everything. The truth you can know. And if really you're a person that looks for the truth, when you will see it, you will recognize it. And even if you made something wrong, you made a mistake, if you're a person that seeks for the truth, you're going to admit, I was wrong. You're going to say the truth, I was wrong, I'm sorry. Is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> it's not too late to say sorry. If Justin Bieber can say sorry, we can all say sorry and to feel comfortable, relaxed, apologize. What? What's the problem to say sorry? If you were wrong, if you made a mistake, so the most honest thing in the world is to do tshuva, to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I messed up, I'm sorry, I was wrong. What can I do about it? I'll try to fix it. How much you say I owe you? Okay, I'll pay. I'm sorry. You hurt your wife, you hurt your friend, you hurt your parents, you, you, you insulted someone, accidentally you, you, you ruined, you destroyed, you, you killed someone. What can you do? What can you do? Can you do something to, 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 to bring time back? Can, can you go back to, to, to the past? You cannot. So what should you do? You should say the truth. Be a man of truth. Be a woman of truth. Say the truth. Stand up in front of yourself and say the truth. The truth is the seal of the Creator. What that will bring us back to Him, what that will bring Him back to us, it's only the truth. When we're going to stop lying, He will come back to us. When we're going to say the truth, He will come back to us. That's it. That's the whole story. And people think, oh, the truth, the divine truth. No, no, no. That's a lie of leaders that wanted to separate themselves from the common people. So they said to everyone, it can be in Judaism, it can be in Christianity, in Islam, in every group of people, every community in the world, every nation, that the leaders wanted to divide themselves from the common people, from the simple people. So they told them, I'm, I, they were idealizing themselves. They said, I'm holding the truth. I know something that you don't know. And then they made you 
to need them. Now you're weak. You're not as wise. You're not as rich. You're not as 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 important. Why? Because they're close to God. They're close to the success. They're close to whatever. And it's their imagination. It's like they made up all of that story because they want it all for themselves. But how can it be that God, the created heaven and earth, will be more with one person than with the other? How can it be that Father of Mercy will choose to love one of his children more than another? How can it be? But we gave up on our own logic, like we said before. We chose to follow those leaders because we were afraid of them or because that we had desires or, or whatever, that we wanted to be close to someone that will protect us because we were afraid to deal with life. So we chose to hide under that person or under that title or, or, or to work in that job, in that company, to dress like that, to wear like that, to, 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 to join that group. That, it's all decisions that had been took out of fear. So they were mistakes. All of the decisions that were made out of fear, they are the mistakes of your life. And all of the decisions that you keep, that you do in your life out of love, out of understanding, out of goodwill, those are the decisions that brought you to your life success, to your understandings, to your wisdom, to your humility, to your spirituality, to your... Uh, 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 awareness, emotional awareness, to everything that you have in your life, those things brought you to. The things that you chose with your free will, that you decided, okay, I'm going to make another step in life. I'm going to progress. I'm going to be who that I am. In the moment that you gave up on yourself, you gave up on faith. You gave up on God because God made you to be who that you are. And if you gave up on the gift of the creation, of what that He gave you, He gave you your hair, He gave you your mind, He gave you your eyes, He gave you your height, He gave you your whatever you have. He gave you your parents, He gave you your house. He took your house, He took your parents, He took whatever He took away from you. That's what He decided that will be the best for you. In the minute that you gave up on that, that you decided that it's less beautiful, that it's less important, that it's not as good as something else, in that moment you gave up on your connection with the Creator. That He was the one that chose those things for you. Like the, the Mishnah is saying, you cannot choose to come down to this world, to born in this world. You're not choose to live in this world and you're not choosing also the last day of your life. You're like... You're here because God says so. And that's it. Now you need to deal with it. You need to do the best that you can do with the time that you're here. As much as you can. As much as you will find that you're able to do, to keep, as much good that you can do, do. That's it. That's the whole story of this world. So now, let's say that there is a weak person that it's very easy to, to compare that thing to, to like, like in a tale to like an animal competition. You're going to try to put a snail that walks very slow in a competition to run with a, with a, with a zebra, with a, with a cheetah, with a lion. Who will catch more distance? Who will, will achieve more distance in an hour, let's say? For sure, the, yeah, the big animal, the, the, the faster animal will, will achieve more distance. But does it mean that really it's supposed to be rewarded more than the tiny snail that was crawling all of that time, slowly, slowly, trying to, to, to speed up? If he put more effort in that competition, so he was supposed to be rewarded more, even though that he achieved less distance. Because what that counts is not the distance. What that counts is not how many Shabbatot you were keeping. Not how many times you put fill in. No, how much money you put in charity. If you were broken, if you were poor all of your life, if you were you, like you, you, you were not managing financially in your life, 
So how can you put the same amounts that a billionaire accidentally one time wrote another zero on his check and, and, and he, he didn't felt like comfortable canceling that check. So he said, okay, whatever. In one time, you already, you lost what the T gave you. You, 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 you will never gonna, gonna achieve what the, what the T achieved in one time. But if he did it only for honor and he really couldn't care less about supporting those poor that he wrote the check for them and just wanted them off his carpet, it was a new carpet, he just received it from, from the, the last ship that came from Japan, and you know, you can't let every Haredi walk on your new carpets. So <laughs> I'll write something fast for you and please go. And now he also made a mistake, but you know, in that community, there are people, and for sure they're going to know, and people will talk, so okay, let's forget about it. So now you're going to work all of your life, and from the pennies that you're receiving, working as, as a driver, whatever, and then you're giving newspapers, and you're poor, and you're broken, and you're broke, and you don't have money, and your miser money is a joke, and you give another $10, and you don't have even miser money because you have debts. And now, we, oh, 120 years, you haven't completed that amount that he may say. So now you will be rewarded less than him on that check that he accidentally wrote. No way. Because God is looking for the heart. The Creator is asking what you have in your heart. Hashem is saying, I own the money, the gold, the silver. Hashem Itbarach is saying, Mik di mani v'ashalem. You put mezuzah on your, on your door. Did you put the mezuzah before I gave you that house or after? What happened early? What happened first? First of all, Hashem gave you a house. Now you put mezuzah. Wow, it's so amazing that you put that mezuzah. Why won't you be grateful to Hashem Itbarach that gave you that house? That's the way. First of all, to see reality. So in reality, if you put all of your effort, if you put your mind, if you put your prayers, if you put your will, if you put your heart, and you care, and you want to fix, and you want to do good, that's the success of your life. Because that's really the only thing that you can do. And you cannot do more than that. You cannot. A person finds himself in shul, he's trying, he's coming, putting the effort. What can you do? Not always you catch all of the information and all of the knowledge. Sometimes it's too hard for you to learn. You came to a class, you came to a shiur, you sat in front of the book, you find yourself falling asleep in front of the book. What can you do? Things happen, you work all day long, and now you're going to hate yourself and blame yourself. No, I'm not learning enough, I'm not putting enough effort. Look at him, he's sitting all day long, eight hours every day learning Mara. Wow, who knows that those eight hours counts as your one minute? Do you know how much it means to the Creator when He sees your effort to pray and to hold the Siddur and to stand like that, like, like stupid in shul, and you don't know where they're holding in the prayer, and you don't know, they just started, it's the first Kaddish, last Kaddish, where are they in, in the Minyan? And after 15 minutes, someone tells you, no, you need to hold the Siddur upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so, reality, we all face that reality. You want me to confess? I'll confess. First time that I came, I was 21 years old. First time that I came to the Western Wall, to the Kotel Amaravi, to put fill in. I've been to the Western Wall many times before, but to put fill in, first time in my life to put fill in in the Western Wall, it was when I was 21 years old. It was one week after I bought my fill in. Before of that, I put, like, you know, the secular Jews, they think that there is a mitzvah to put fill in in the bar mitzvah. So they buying fill in for the bar mitzvah, and then they're putting fill in the bar mitzvah, and that's it. And then they're putting it in the, in the closet. So it's a menech fill in in the closet. He puts the fill in in the closet. So, so, that's what I did also. I thought that's the minhag. You need to put fill in the bar mitzvah. So I put it in the bar mitzvah. Thank God. <laughs> there was once a woman that came and called the rabbi and she told him, you don't know, my husband is so righteous. So she, he asked her, is he putting fill in every day? So she said, no, he's working very hard. That's the truth. But every Shabbos he's got time because he's not working in Shabbat and he puts his fill in. <laughs> and he's dedicating all of the morning to prayers and to tefillot. What can you do if you grew up in the houses that we grew up in? What can you do? You never knew. You never heard about us. So I put fill in in age of 13. We kept the mitzvah. It was fantastic, amazing. Nice suit, nice guest, nice checks, envelopes, all of that, all the ceremony. It was wonderful. 
And then in the age of 21, I decided that I want also to start putting tefillin like you should. And I went to the Western world. And I put my tefillin and I put it on the arm first and then I'm putting it on the head and then an old rabbi, like you, you must meet one like that when you come to the Western world. And he's asking me, are you always putting your tefillin like that? So I, <laughs> like, always. You know, it's, <laughs> yes. So he said, you, you forgot the house, the box of the tefillin, you haven't <laughs> took it out of the tefillin. So, so he asked me, the, the, you took off the box of the tefillin of your hand from it, or that, that's how you put usually tefillin? So I told him, no, for sure. And I took it off and I was hiding myself like, what can you do? What can you do? What the hell can you do? <laughs> you don't know. I thought that that's how you keep your tefillin, you honor your tefillin, you respect your tefillin, you're watching the tefillin. Yes, with the box. You put. <laughs> do you want to sweat on your tefillin? Are you crazy? Are you... I didn't know. So that's how I put my tefillin. So that person came to me and he told me, so now, if my desire was a holy desire, like that it was, I really wanted to put tefillin. So when that person came to me and told me that I did something wrong, I took his rebuke. I felt ashamed. I felt bad with myself, but it didn't stop me from coming again and putting tefillin in the next day. The shame of that rebuke, of that insulting. I have a friend that he said to his wife, that she's rebuking him all of the time. So he told her, why are you all of the time rebuking and insulting? So she told him, listen, you're so arrogant that I cannot say one word without you being insulted. I'm not rebuking, we're just talking. That's how people talk. So for us, it's like every word you lose your mind and you feel so insulted. If you would really have a desire to learn and to come closer to Hashem, and to learn and to develop and to grow, so words wouldn't harm you, wouldn't hurt you so much. So they told you that you don't know how to put it fill in. Do you think that you know how to put fill in? The truth is that you really don't know how to put fill in. There was an Amor, a righteous man in the generation of the Gemara, that one time he mistaked in the way that he was wrapping the, the, the strap of what? <laughs> strap of the tefillin, working on my tefillin, working on my English, we're working on that. So he, one time, accidentally, he, he, he was circling one time on top of the other, like he made two circles in one place. And it's not halakhically right. So he fasted for 40 days to fix that thing. So you think you know how to put tefillin? We don't know. We're just trying to do the best that we can. The best that we can. Many mistakes can happen in the way. You want to keep Shabbat. I'm keeping Shabbat. You keep Shabbat. Yes, I'm keeping Shabbat. Is it a joke? You think you know how to keep Shabbat? Do you really think that you know how to keep Shabbat? It's written, En am Aretz Chasid. A person that is not a real student, his mind and his heart in the limud, in the learning, for years and years and years, he cannot keep Shabbat. You don't know how to keep Shabbat. Okay, you're trying. You're doing the best. That's the best thing to do. That's okay. That's good enough for Hashem. Hashem is not expecting you to become a Talmud Chacham, a genius, a righteous man, a righteous woman, a, a hidden righteous one. It, it, that's not the mission. The mission is to be honest, is to be close to Hashem. When you have that desire to learn, you will learn. And then one step will lead you to the other. And then from every situation in life, you're going to develop, you're going to grow, you're going to learn. So what? So she rebuked you, though. so he rebuked you, so he told you, so she told so what? Listen to her voice. Listen to the words that have been said to you. So she called you lazy and worthless and hopeless and, and, and disgusting. So listen, maybe you're doing something wrong. What's your problem? Why not to learn? Maybe you can fix yourself. Maybe you're not going to discuss your wife anymore. Maybe one day it's going to happen. You don't want that? If it's an option, you don't want to climb up from your laziness, from, from being so selfish and, 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 and silly, acting rude. The result of you not learning, that's the answer for the question, why your children are not educated? Why your children are lazy? 
Because you don't want to go out from your bad manners, from your bad midot. So your children are showing it to you while they're eating like that. You don't see yourself while you're eating. You see only the food. But when you finish, and you for sure finish first, so you look at everyone else and then you have time to rebuke. But you don't see where they learn their habits from. You're the role model of the house. You're the father. You're the mother. You're the one that is teaching everyone that's around you how to behave. No matter what, in which position you are, people are looking at you all of the time. People are learning from you. If you see lackings in people, instead of fighting with everyone and hating everyone and blaming everyone, try to learn what the Creator is hinting you about. Maybe it's your temper, maybe it's your anger, maybe it's your sadness, maybe it's your depression, maybe you are cheap, maybe you're not so generous, maybe you have issues, maybe you let yourself run away with, with no responsibility and not taking enough on yourself and all of the thoughts that you have on others. Try to look why you see those things. Two people went to the same shul, every one of them went out with a different feeling with a different conclusion, different understandings. Why? Because you're different. And you're catching what that belongs to you. The messages that the Creator is providing to you are the ones that you need to learn. So just you need to want to learn. That's the only thing, the will. If you will want to learn, you will learn. If you will not going to want to learn, you won't learn. You're going to always argue, always rebuke, always going to have answers to answer, always going to try to avoid responsibility and to argue and to find yourself like running away from, from one place to the other and changing places and, and, and you're going to lose what that you could achieve, what that God wanted and provided for you. Life is a gift, but it's a gift for the ones that wants to enjoy the gift, the ones that wants to spend time with Hashem. If you don't really want to spend time with Hashem, no matter where you're going to be, in the biggest shul, in the holiest community, you're not going to grow. You can see many people that can spend years on years in front of open Gemara, in front of open books, and they don't catch anything. It's empty people, empty, hollow souls, dark people that... Why? Because they're stubborn. They didn't came to learn. And you can see a person that goes in the streets and he's like, you, you're going to say he's off the derech, he's out of the right way, he's not serving Hashem. And you're going to see that that person is a beam of light. He's, a, he's shining to the world with his good manners, with his, he's so polite and so kind and helping others and supporting. There is a story in the Gemara on a righteous man that walked with Eliyahu and Avi, Eliyahu the prophet. And he's asking Eliyahu, please show me the ones that have a share in the world to come. From all of the thousands of people that were standing in that day, in that hour in the market, Eliyahu and Avi shown him two people. Two people that looked to him like Goim, like that they're not Jews at all. They were Jewish, but they were acting not as Jewish. They were hiding their Judaism and they were helping their friends. Every one of them had a special story. Every one of them had something unique, something special that he was doing, hiding his Judaism because he had a purpose to save souls, to save people. So what is the path of your life? Who are you? What's your mission? You... For a person, it's very easy to think for himself, okay, I must change myself. I must be a better person, so it means that I need to change my outfit, it means I need to go to do other things in life, it means that I need to do more, I need to learn more, whatever, great. If that's the right thing, you should do that. But I suggest, first of all, before of trying to change yourself, to become different, to be something else, to try to check who you really are. What you're already doing in this world. Because God sent you to this world with a mission. And I think that you're in that mission long enough and deep enough to find many, many success already. How many people until today you spoke with them and you gave them the right advice, a supportive advice? How many people that were sad and depressed, you were cheering them up, you were supporting them, you were helping them from your life experience? From your life experience, you shared from your wisdom, from your past, from what that you went through in life. I had a friend 
still my friend. We're not in touch. I had, you can say I had a friend. A friend of mine. He came to me once and he told me he, he done something very good for me and he helped me. But on top of that, he was helping me very much with, with my children. So I told him that to that person, I told him, I appreciate you very much. But how much that I appreciate you on helping my children is, is way, way higher. It's much more. And think about it. You can keep the all mitzvot for yourself. To do many things for Hashem. To pay, wake up every morning very early and to pray and to wash your hands and to say all of the blessings, the brachot, and to pray long Shmona Yisrael and to have your intention in all of the blessings and to do everything perfect. To buy only Chalav Yisrael and only Mehadrin meat and everything perfect. And even be chassid and guard your eyes and sit all day long in shul and learn only Gemara and don't have no internet and nothing and... You won't see my classes, but okay, you're going to manage, you're going to continue, you're going to be okay. Okay, let's say so. That's one Jew that you save yourself. But if you're going to open your eyes, and you're going to go a little bit outside of shul, and you're going to meet people at work, and you're going to give right advice to people and to friends, and in the grocery, you're going to help people, the grocery store, you're going to help some people with their bags, and you're going to be nice to people, and you're going to help some people, and people that will need your help, you're going to provide as much as you can. So how many Jews you help? How many people you save? Thousands. And the truth is that you cannot count. There is no amount that you can count the good deeds and good actions. And it's written in the Bible. It's written in the Torah, Dosha. But we misinterpret because we don't count on ourselves, because we don't believe in ourselves. So this is why we don't understand the real truth of the Bible as well, of Judaism as well. Because the Torah is telling you that the mitzvot between friends, between people, are much more important to Hashem Himself than mitzvot between a person to, to God. What did you do with your friends, helping them, supporting them, giving them the right advice, being nice to them, to them smiling to people, the Gemara is saying that it's more precious than to give charity. On charity, it's, it's written on charity, that if you gave charity, so that charity saves souls, saves people from death. It's very good to give charity, right? Wonderful. But to smile to a person is greater than that is more important than to give charity. Okay, so give me a smile. <laughs> you see? How much you achieved now? And you keep the money in your pocket. <laughs> so perfect. Malbin Shinai Mechalab. Why? Because now you gave milk to that person. Great, he needed that milk. He needed $10, $20. $1,000, you paid his rent, you paid his mortgage, you did something fantastic, something huge, you made wonders with that person. In the moment that you finish giving him that money, that's where the mitzvah finished. That's it. But on charity, that is spiritual charity, like Zikwe Arabim, helping people to come back to Hashem, to encourage people, to teach, to inspire people, to serve Hashem, to smile to people. On that it's written, Tzidkato Medet Lad. That's an eternal charity that will stand for you forever, for good. Why? Because when you smile to that person, you don't know what you did with that smile. You might even save to that person's life with that smile that you smile to him. Because he was so down in that day. He was so broken in that day. People are coming to me on daily basis and telling me, you don't know one class of yours that I heard changed my life. And my classes are just, there are people that sin small sins. What they're doing, they, what they're, the obligation for them, they need to do tshuva, they need to confess. If you messed up, you sinned, you did something wrong, you need to confess. You need to go to Hashem Barak, to the Creator, stand in front of Him. And to tell him, Father in heaven, I'm sorry, I sinned, I made something wrong, I still, I stole money, I was lying, I was cheating, I was betraying, I, I'm sorry. Is it too late to say sorry? No, it's not too late. You can say I'm sorry, you do tshuva, and you move on, right? <laughs> you do tshuva, you move on. Great. But there are sins that are worse than a regular sin. And to stand in front of Hashem Barach and to confess, it's not enough on those sins. So what's going to fix those sins? Which ones? 
Yom Kippur, for sure, not going to help on those abonot. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll tell you. It calls tshuva barabim to do tshuva to confess in front of public. If you stolen money from a person, you took money, you need to return the money from him. But if you stolen money from the community, from the synagogue, who you gonna pay? What you need to do? How you can pay back? How you can? What you should do? You should come to the shul when everyone are there. You need to knock on this on the on the bima and to apologize in front of the public i messed up i did something wrong for all of the community i went i was telling on you i was snitching on you i said to the governor i was doing something wrong to all of this building i prevented all if you messed up you do you, you told something to the city hall and they prevent all of them from building i don't know you did something for the whole building so to do chuva will not going to be enough you need to apologize to the public, to all of the people that you hurt them. So if you were doing things in public, so you need to do tshuva in public. That's the definition of my classes. I'm doing tshuva in public, live on Facebook. That's what Hashem wants from me. I messed up so <laughs> nicely that I need to do tshuva. We do it. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing tshuva. All day long, that's what I'm doing. All of the time doing tshuva. And I realized that to do tshuva in public, maybe that can erase my sins. <coughs> so, to give up and to fall to sadness. Oh no, I was a clubber. I was making parties. I was bringing thousands of people to dance and whatever. I was doing those horrible things. What can I do? There is a way for me to fix it, to erase my past. Nothing. It's in the newspapers. It's <coughs> in the cameras from heaven. I had my past. It happened. Okay, I'm carrying my scars with me and other people as well. So what can we do except of doing tshuva in public? This is why I'm not a rabbi and this is why I'm not claiming to become a rabbi, to be a rabbi and I'm not hoping and not planning to become a rabbi. And Rabbanut Mekaberet et Be'alea is burying the people that are, 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 are holding it. You want to be a rabbi? So it's like to buy for yourself a grave. I don't want to die. <laughs> I want to live. I want to live forever. You know that? It's a different generation. Not all of you remember. Okay. So, Baruch Hashem, we're on the same page. Need to do tshuva in public. All of you, Baruch Hashem. I'll help you, don't worry. Bezat Hashem. We're going to go through that together. It's going to be okay. We just need to say the truth. Because in the moment that you lie to Hashem, Barach, try to hide your sins, say, no, I wasn't, why are you telling me? No. Come on, face it. God now is rebuking you through that person. God is using your husband, God is using your wife, God is using your friend, God is using your, your, your boss to tell you a message. The Gemara is saying, the Talmud is saying, that if someone been blamed in something, so for sure he did it. And if he didn't do it, so for sure he wanted to do that. And if he didn't want it really to do that, so at least he thought about doing it. At least once. You can't avoid the responsibility. You cannot say no. No, don't say no. If it came to you, so someone sent it to you. And if you believe in God, so it's, uh, finish with, 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 with denying and, and hiding and... and now they told you that you're a liar. Okay, so deal with it. What, you never lied in your life? Are you, who are you? Jesus? <laughs> he never lied. He never lied. He never been with a woman. He never sinned. He, okay, great. Abraham Avinu, he sinned. Yitzchak Avinu, he, he sinned. Yaakov Avinu, he sinned. Moshe Rabbeinu, he, he mistake five times. He's been punished on his mistakes. He hit the rock. All of them. Five sins, five mistakes. The Torah is, is rebuking him. Five sins, five mistakes to Moshe Rabbeinu. Five times he fell in anger. The Torah is testifying. The Torah is showing everyone exactly what he did. So as long as you're not Jesus, so you, you cannot say that. Uh, come on. Finish. Finish with the comedy. Finish with, finish with, with hiding and, and pretending and idolizing yourself. No. Don't say. Don't tell. Don't, don't, don't rebuke me. Why? 
It's written, et asher yoav Hashem yochiach. God, he loves the one that he rebukes. And if he's rebuking you day and night and he's so hard on you, like, a, like a, 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 a hot iron on your head, breaking you to pieces, that's it. You can't handle anymore. The only reason that you can't handle anymore is because that your will to learn is weak. That's the only reason. In the moment that you will decide to accept that test, no matter what, it will make it so much lighter, so much easier that it's like you're in a different lane, different road, different path in life. Everything will be different for you. It all depends on your decision. The suffer that you're suffering is not because of the difficulties themselves. It's only because of the fact that you don't want them. Because that you don't want to suffer. And I'm with you. I don't want to suffer as well. <laughs> we don't want to suffer. But we need to see why we are suffering, why we're going through those difficulties. And if you will open your ears and will open your heart to learn and to try to understand what's going on in this world, who am I, what's my mission, what is God telling me all of the time, why the same rebuke, why I was being insulted by my mother and then I was insulted by my first shidduch and then I was insulted by my second shidduch and why then I was insulted by my first wife and then the second wife she's doing... Okay, so no, you are Jesus. <laughs> we already agreed on that. Let's face reality. You have a pattern. You have a problem. Things are coming again and again in your life. You're always late. You're always tired. You always feel bad. You always have headaches. You're always stuck with no money in the end of the month. You're always getting into arguments. Always finding yourself with the face to the wall. Always fighting on points that you shouldn't fight on. Okay, so first step is to recognize the truth. And it's not to judge yourself and criticize yourself and blame yourself and slaughter yourself and now punishing yourself on being who that you are. No. First of all, see, and I'm going to tell you the truth. When you're going to find out who you really are, you're going to be so happy to be who that you are with all of your defaults, with all of your de defects, with all of your problems, all of your lackings, all of your weaknesses. You're going to understand really who you are and why you're like that. You're going to love yourself and you're going to appreciate yourself on being so scared, on being so angry, on being so hurt and vulnerable and scared. Because you're going to, just if you're going to remember where it's all started from, abusive parents, bad neighbors, horrible friends, ex-girlfriend, whatever happened to you that crushed you, that destroyed you, that brought you today to defend yourself and to be so afraid and so scared and so aggressive and offensive and insulting everyone and attacking. Listen, before you try to change yourself, if you're going to work too hard on that branch to straighten it up, you're going to break it. You're going to break yourself. Listen to yourself. Try to check yourself why you are attacking, why you're talking Lashon Ara, bad speech on every person, why you're saying bad things, or why you have such foreign thoughts, why you think about women all of the time, why you can't close your eyes, why you're always afraid what's going to happen with money, why, do you, why you're terrified. If you're going to just put your heart in listening to yourself, to see who you are, to recognize yourself, to find the truth of who that you are, your real being, your true self, you're going to appreciate yourself so much. You're going to love yourself. You're going to admire yourself. You're going to be happy to have yourself as your best friend. You're going to be who that you are and you're going to be proud and you're going to find the strength and the power to work on yourself also and to climb up from that problem that you have. And you're going to find advice and you're going to find wisdom only when you're going to start walking in the path of truth. Because that is the nature of truth. Truth is not a conclusion. It's not a book. It's not a Tanakh. Book will never going to answer your questions in life. You're going to meet many, many situations that you cannot find the answer in no book. And even if you're going to open the book, you won't find the answer. I'm not saying that it's not written somewhere inside. Everything is written inside, but for you, you need an answer now in the grocery store when you're now stuck in traffic and you don't have an advice. You cannot open the book right now. You cannot fish the answer from inside. You must find the answer inside of you. And the truth got that nature 
of bringing you forward and forward to make another step and another step. This is why the word truth in Hebrew, in the Holy Language, you write it Aleph, Mem, and Taf. First letter, middle letter, and the last letter. To tell you, it's a process. It got a beginning, it got a middle, and you need to reach the end of it. Where is the end of it? After 120, then you'll see the world of truth. But until then, you always need to search for the truth. Always. On your deathbed, you need to look for Hashem. How can you come closer to Hashem? What's going to bring you closer? How can you keep yourself holy? How can you keep yourself clean? How can you keep on being positive and aim your heart to Hashem? Even on your deathbed, after 119 and... You will find more truth in the last moments of your life, like people that came back from the dead, what they're telling that they saw all of their life and they saw amazing things and all of their life like a dream came in front of their eyes and they came back with such understandings. Where all of those understandings came from? From the last moments on earth. So you see that you learn so much no matter where you hold in life, but you need to have that will. And the truth will make you make another step. And it's hard sometimes. It's committing sometimes. Sometimes the truth is painful. But why is it painful? Because you haven't worked enough on your desire to buy the truth, to know the truth. Because it's hard for you because somewhere you still refuse to accept the truth. And you're arguing with the truth because you have your own desires and your own laziness and, and you're stubborn and it's hard for you and you're stiff and you're hard. Only because you're not really ho holding yourself close to the truth. But if you will have that will, and that's what that I'm doing and offering to everyone, because everyone got that truth inside of him, to tell you that the truth is somewhere else, that's just the lie of all of the generations. That's exactly what that was making us to born to this world so far from the truth. Because our fathers or forefathers or ancestors, they saw that the truth is so far, so they gave up. People came after the Holocaust to the U.S. and they said to themselves, okay, to keep Torah mitzvot in this hell of United States of America, like that my great-grandfather was keeping in Poland, in Germany, in, in, in Ukraine 100 years ago. No way, I'm sorry. So because the, the truth was so far from him to catch, to hold, to grab, to hold on to, so he gave up. So he gave up on everything. This is why we're giving up today on so many diamonds that we can just put our hands on. Because we're idolizing them. Because we're putting them too high. Because we're saying, no, to be close to Hashem, for that you need to learn. For that you need to be holy, to pray to Hashem. For that you need to be close to Him. You need to, to be a servant of a holy man, a rabbi. You need to be a helper for years. You must learn Torah. Where was your childhood? What were you doing in your youth? What were you doing yesterday? How you ate breakfast? So now you want me, after that I was eating training, bacon, I don't know what breakfast, that now in noontime I'll do tshuva, no, I'm sorry, I'm driving in Shabbat, you want me to work tzitzit? No way, I'm not wearing kippah to work, so now you want me to eat kosher? No, I can't, why? Because someone told you that you must keep all of the Torah mitzvot, and that you should do everything, someone was standing, and he was wrong, in the way that he was educating you. And he had his responsibility on rejecting you from the truth. But you now have the responsibility to bring yourself closer and closer to the truth, no matter what you went through until today. Even if so many diamonds were lost, and even if you lost so many things in life, still, if you will understand that to be close to the Creator, it depends in the truth, so there is nothing that is holding you back from it. Because even to say, the truth that you're a liar, that you're lazy, that you don't have power to serve, that you're rather to lie all day long in the beach, it will bring you to the next step. It's not saying, I'm not saying that it will bring you to make Hashem happy. It will bring you to make another step. And that will make Hashem happy, that you will progress. For sure that the result 
to lie down on the beach and to say all day long, no Hashem, that's my truth, that's what I love. That's not your truth. That's your laziness that is talking out of your mouth. But if you really want to come closer to Hashem, but it's hard for you not to jog, not to eat in restaurants, not to go and date, even with women, it's hard for you to guard your eyes. It's hard for you to go- come off the Facebook and your, your computer, movies. What If you're going to just say the truth, God will give you the power and the right advice to make another step closer to Him. And if your truth will be tested in the next step, and you will be an honest man, an honest person, you will receive the approval to make another step, and another step, and another step, until you will reach your real truth. You're going to find yourself. You're going to find your soul. You're going to find the spiritual roots of your being, your essence, who that you really are. You're going to know it. You're going to know who you are. That was my goal in the beginning of my my tshuva. I was not searching for no religion. I didn't care about Judaism at all, like I told you before. It wasn't on my plate at all. I wasn't searching for it. I couldn't care less about it. But I felt bad with myself. I felt that I'm doing things wrong. I felt that I'm lying to myself, that I'm not being who that I am, that I'm avoiding responsibility, and that I'm afraid of my best friends, and that I need to make everyone like me and care about me and think about me, that I'm so good. And and I felt like I don't want to be good today. I want to be myself today. And I cannot because they're calling and they're thinking and they're going to say and they're going to talk. So I felt like, hey, so what are you doing here? You, you, you're here to suffer? So I was searching for myself. I was searching for my own truth to go and to enjoy with the friends that I wanted to enjoy with. And not because that they called and what they're going to say and if I'm not going to come, so they're going to play angry and whatever. I didn't want that. So I start rebel. I start fighting. I start arguing. I start answering. I was starting to stand up on my, for myself. And that's the redemption of the individual, of the person, that he will be who that he is. But not to be aggressive, not to fight with everyone. No, I'm a Jew. No, I'm keeping Shabbat. From that. No, no, not to be crazy. We didn't say to be Haredi, uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my English is... Uh, I really I must, I must work on my English skills. <laughs> To be yourself, it's not to be strong and evil and powerful and I don't know what. To be yourself, it's to be a person that seeks for the truth. And like we said before, if someone will stand against you and going to rebuke you and going to tell you you're wrong, and you're going to hear some words of truth in what that he said, so you need to work on yourself because you are blind, because you are wrong. So be brave and strong enough to admit and to say, I'm sorry, you're right. I'm apologizing. Sorry for hurt your feelings. Sorry for insulting you. Sorry for stepping on your footsteps on, on your, or on your fingers. Sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. I love you. I appreciate your honesty to tell me the truth. And that's the only path. That's the only way that you will reach the truth. Because God is not looking for puppets. God is not looking for robots. God is not looking for soldiers. God is not looking for people with uniforms. God is not looking for actors. God is not looking for people to read and gonna receive A plus on, on reading. That's not what God is looking for. Rahmana li babai, the Creator, the Merciful Father, He is looking for your heart, that you will be honest and sincere to stand in front of Him and to say, you know why I am not learning eight hours of Gemara a day? Because I don't feel like it. I'm sorry. And now, if you say that it's so important, so I will say that. That is my next step. Hashem, please, can you help me to understand the importance of learning Mara? If I will say to Hashem, you know why I'm not learning Mara? Because I don't have money. Because all day long I need to drive the Uber cab and to bring another income and to work like crazy. And I'm working in two jobs and my wife and we have children. And for you we have children and I married her only for you. Okay, you know what Hashem going to help you with? He gonna send your wife away for two weeks to Hawaii for a vacation with her friends, and your children gonna go to summer camp, and you'll have money for at least three months ahead, 
and then we'll see if you will open the books and learn Gemara, or that you're going to drink some uh, vodka with mm -hmm. your friends. Oh, nice Super Bowl now. Wow, yeah, it's really amazing. What are you going to do now? Okay, the evening of the Super Bowl, right, it's evening, that is free heaven, all right? No one works in, my, in Miami except of the, the sports bar. No one is working in, in, in that evening. What are you going to do in that evening? Are you going to open the Gemara? Say the truth, you're not going to open the Gemara. Why are you not going to open the Gemara? Because you don't feel like opening the Gemara. And I'm telling you, it's okay. Not because I don't want you to learn Gemara. I want you to learn Gemara. I also want myself to learn Gemara. But I don't feel like I'm able to do that. And I'm not feeling like I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to lie to you and going to pretend to learn Gemara in that night. I'm not going to watch the Super Bowl, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to look for myself because I feel that for me to find myself, to spend time with my family, with my wife, with my kids, maybe to go and do it, but do it, maybe to read from another book, maybe to do something that I will feel that is useful for me. That's what I'm going to do. And I don't think that to lie to Hashem Barach and pretending, no, because of you I'm not learning Gemara. The truth is that if you would really want to learn Gemara, you would have a small tiny Gemara in your pocket, always going with it and learning Gemara every time that you want. And that's what you would do if you would want it. But the truth is that you don't want it. So this is why you're not carrying the book with you to every place you go. But if you would really want to go, and I'm not holding her, it's a different book. I told you, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's another book. It's a different book. Because I desire to learn from that book, and I also don't have time to learn from that book, but at least I'm carrying it with me, because I want to, want to, want to, want to learn in that book. So I'm honest enough with myself to carry it with me. You're going to show your truth to Hashem, and then Hashem will let you open that book. And then Hashem will open the next step for you, the next gate for you. Only truth will bring you closer to the Creator. And lies, no matter where you are, no matter which amazing, inspiring lies you're going to lie to yourself, will just going to reject you from the Creator. You're not going to find Him. A person that is lying cannot stand in front of my eyes, Hashem is saying. Cannot. But the truth will stand forever. Forever. Forever and ever. Which truth? Your truth. Your truth. I'm alone. I'm bitter. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I'm confused. I have so many lusts and desires and I hate my life and I want to die and I want to kill myself and I, I want to smoke drugs and to smoke myself away from him. That's what I want. Okay, that's your truth. Say to Hashem. It will bring you closer to Him. Don't be afraid to say the truth. The most horrifying truth that you will say will bring you closer to the Creator. And the most fantastic illusion that you imagine to yourself, it's going to be a fake empire of lies. It won't bring you to Hashem. It will reject you from Him. I'm not saying that you will not going to play religious anymore. I'm not saying that you will lose your beard or your side curls or your kippah. You can play religious. You can play religious and to be very far from the Creator. That the Creator will never shine on you because you're such a liar. Because you're so far from truth. The Creator, He wants the heart. You cannot bribe Hashem. You cannot give Him and offer Him 10 pages of Gemara a day. No, I'm going to learn 20 pages of Gemara a day. You think Hashem cares about your nonsense? Hashem wants you to put your heart in. What did you do? Put your heart into the effort, into the into life. Raise your children, raise yourself, support yourself, help your friends. Be a friend, be loyal, be straight, be good, be nice, be kind, be friendly. That's what Hashem wants. What do you think Hashem wants? You think Hashem is a crazy leader that sits in his palace somewhere else and sending his commandments, his orders to this world? This world is called the world of lie, Alma de Shikra. This world got one purpose, to block the light of Hashem, to hide Hashem. Our mission in this world is to break that wall, to see, to recognize Hashem. Bechol trachecha da'eu, to recognize Him, to find Him in every way you walk. King David is telling us, even if I'm going to go in the valley of death, 
I'm not going to be afraid because you're with me. Value of death. Value of death. It can be Main Street. It can be every street. It can be the highway. It can be on the way to the pubs, to the clubs. It can be to Long Beach, to, 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 to Miami Beach, to, to every place. It can be in New York. It can be in Jerusalem. It can be in Miami. It can be in Hell A. It can be in every place in the world. Okay. Yes. I was there. It's horrible. <laughs> it was my worst tour ever. <laughs> no, people are nice, but the darkness is like Vayamesh Choshech. You can feel the darkness. In LA, it was very hard. Worse than Miami. Yeah, you're going to start talking on Miami, in Miami. Well, I, you need to learn from me. You talk about LA when you're in Miami. You don't talk about Miami when you're in Miami. Wait. Wait a few minutes. No, the truth is that in LA it was very hard. I had a lot of sorrow for the people over there. It's a very hard place to live in. Very hard to reach spirituality. But... Ayad Hashem Tikzar, the hand of Hashem Ibrahim is long enough to illuminate and to shine to all of the places. There is no doubt about it. And also it was my experience. Who knows what other people experience? The truth is that we just need to search for the truth. And to those people that think that, oh, the truth is so far and I need to do this and I must do that. That's not the truth. It's not across the sea, it's not far away from you, it's not across the sea, not after the mountains, the highest mountains. No. It's in your mouth and in your heart to keep. So what you need to keep? You need to keep the truth. What the truth is? Do you believe that there is a creator? Great. So now you need something. What you need to do? You need to call the creator. Okay, now you're stuck in traffic. What you can do? What can you do about it? Now you're stuck in traffic. What are you going to say? Shemot HaKodesh? What are you going to do? You're going to say names, holy names. What? What? You're a Kabbalist. What are you going to do? What What are you going to do? Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Someone can save you from that traffic jam. Something can, can, can save you. Some can, someone can help you. Only one. Now you have issues in your marriage. Okay, so what can you do about it? Every marriage counselor that you're going to go and talk to will bring his relationship, his messed up mind to, your, to, the, to the meetings. <laughs> That's what is going to happen. That's the truth. You think that I'm not bringing myself to the classes? What am I bringing? I'm bringing my messed up mind to the classes. That's what I'm bringing. You bring yourself. Okay, so you might fall on someone that will have some wisdom, that you will have some experience. Great, maybe you can get something. Maybe. But first steps in your life, what you need to do? You need to face the facts. Okay, your wife, she's got issues on those topics. Your husband, he's got issues with you on those topics. Okay, so deal with reality. What's the problem? Why we're not able to discuss? Why we're not able to talk? Let's think. Because of him. No, not because of him. What Hashem is telling me? To blame it's so easy, but it's to avoid the truth. Because if it came to your plate, so it's your food. You need to eat it. So if it's on your plate, so deal with it. But it's not kosher. Okay, so try to find a way how to replace that food that is non-kosher with kosher food. Okay, you have bad situations in life and it's in your plate and you don't want them. To throw them, relax. First of all, check. Why your friends are bringing the non-kosher food to your house? Why those relationships are failing one after the other? Why you find yourself afraid every time? Why every time you've been rebuked, you've been so hurt and insulted and you attack immediately? Why you cannot talk about those issues anymore? Why? What happened? What's going to happen to you? When you're going to look deep into the depths of your soul, to the past, to your old memories, you're going to find a young hurt child that is standing and refusing to accept the sorrow that he felt in that day. And he's keep on rejecting and fighting until today. He was insulted when you were five and until today he will fight and he doesn't care. He took a decision, it will not gonna happen to me anymore. And that's it. 
So in that day, he took that decision, and from now on, he will be terrified, he will be afraid, he will hide, he will lie, he will talk about everyone, he will try to destroy other people's relationships, he will do many things. That kid. Find that kid inside of you. To every problem that you have today in life, it got a root. It got a beginning. To your issues in Shlom Bayit, the beginning started when you were 12. To the eating habits that you have, it's got a beginning when you were 4. To your eyes that are walking and looking everywhere like a drunk person that can control himself, it started when you were 15, 17. It started and it got worse in, in, in the next station. Something happened. If you will find those places, those points, and you will understand that you were very hurt, in those times that you were very lost, in those moments that you took those decisions, that those decisions have been took by you, in those hard hours of your life, you will hug yourself. <coughs> You're going to care about yourself. You're going to accept yourself. And then it will not going to be as hard to deal with those problems anymore. You won't be terrified anymore from women, from money, from people, from, from shopping, from buying a house. You will be able to deal. If you're going to remember why, and if it's hard for you to remember, wait. But at least wait for the truth. And don't find excuses and, and blame other people why it's so hard to buy a house. Why it's so hard to find the right shidduch to get married. It's not hard. You just refused so many times to get married. So many times you were terrified to take that responsibility. To understand that you're not going to marry a supermodel or whatever. It just, it's just your arrogant or your fears that are blocking you from understanding who you are. And who your wife is and who your husband is and what your job is and, and, and what you should do in life. As long as we're working, automatic, no, I must, I need, and you're not thinking, we're not really connected to who that we are inside, so we will never going to be with Hashem. Because always we're going to establish our next step on desires, on lusts, on fears, on angers, and not on the truth. Only when you're really brave enough, strong enough to accept Reality, the truth, to admit what the truth is. I'm scared now. This is why I feel like attacking. I'm terrified now. This is why I'm backing off from this deal. Only when you're going to admit the truth between you to yourself, you're going to see, you're going to recognize, you're going to put your finger on it. You're going to choose to admit, I was afraid right now. And that was the truth. Not that she's not beautiful enough or that it won't make as much money as I hope to have from that. No, no, stop with the nonsense, with the lies. That's what you tell your friends. It's one story. What you tell yourself, that's the main story. When we will start saying the truth and accept the truth and work on that truth, in the end, at night, go yourself alone to your backyard, to your front lawn, to your room, quiet, alone with yourself. And pray to Hashem. Tell Him, today I backed off from that deal because I was scared. Because I don't really think that I'm able to deal with those kind of deals. I don't appreciate myself enough. I don't think that I'm really, that, I, that I'm going to finish it, that I'm going to make it. If you're going to stand like that with Hashem and then just finish it with a prayer, simple prayer, please Hashem. Give me the power to believe in myself, to succeed. That's honesty. That's purity. That's dignity. That is something to be proud of, to be a person like that. That's pride. That's a good, holy pride. To feel good with yourself, to be honest, to be able to admit in your lackings and your weaknesses. That's the truth. I'm voting for the truth. That's what I'm offering you today. You can buy it, or you can run for your life. You will decide. Thank you very much. Be blessed. Thank God. By the...
kindness of Hashem Barach that really helped us until today. So we opened the center in Jerusalem and we opened the website that once was called emunachannel.com and today we use the emuna.com address. And we're spreading faith in the world. We have over 50,000 people that we're reaching out to every month. It's growing, like the Rav said before, through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through YouTube, through SoundCloud. We have thousands of people that are enjoying all of our content, classes and lectures. And I'm also with my wonderful family, sacrificing ourselves and touring into the darkness of exile. And we're very happy and pleased to do that. But we're asking for your help. Inside those envelopes that we gave you, there are um, cards that you can fill your details. <clears throat> I'm asking you please to help us and to support us. If it's a one-time donation, if it's a monthly donation, it can be very useful for us. Every donation is saving lives of people. Like that I'm doing here today, helping you guys, it's because that other people helped me to pay for this tool and to, to make those wonderful things that we're doing. We gave you CDs and stuff. If you need pens, if you need anything, we would love to, to provide for you. It's a big blessing. We're receiving hundreds and thousands of emails from people that their life been changed. Many of the faces that are here today are here because that their life already been changed through those wonderful conversations that are just revealing the truth. It's not an inspiring rabbi, nothing. It's a good friend of all of you that is trying to provide and to give you from his life experience. Me. So if you will be so kind, I appreciate it very much. I promise to pray for you. And you please write your names on the envelopes. I would love to pray for each and every one of you. And by the merit of your generosity and your goodwill and your heart, that Hashem will answer to all of your prayers and requests, that you will never going to feel that you've been left behind, that you will know and believe in yourself to know how important you are in the eyes of Hashem, how much He cares about you, how much He loves you. In our website you can see more than 800 videos of my lectures. It's worth it to try. We have many, many subjects on peace in the house, on financials, on money, on faith, on Hid Bodedut, on prayer, on the land of Israel, on doing tshuva, on Judaism. Thank you, first one. May Hashem bless you. That all of your prayers and requests will be answered. Thank you very much. Hashem will answer to all of your prayers. To believe in yourself, a man can hear something. Thank you very much. <laughs>